I'll never forget his face. It wasn't a robbery gone bad. There was no resistance to this guy. He just simply was going to kill somebody. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 creepy unsolved rest stop mysteries. Only two clues exist. The description of the suspect's vehicle and the sketchy description of the suspect himself. For this list, we're ranking the most shocking, disturbing, and unsolved crimes to take place at rest stops or along desolate highways. Have you heard of these before? Share your stories in the comments. Number 10 phone booth demise. Truck driving can be a challenging profession, with long hours working a great distance from friends and family. That said, it's natural that any driver in the pre-cell phone era would make a pit stop to call their loved ones to check in on the homestead, right? That's what Dwayne McCorkendale was doing in the autumn of 1988 when he pulled into a truck stop and used a phone booth to call home. His body was unfortunately found in that booth ambushed by unknown assailants while he was making the call. Whoever was involved in this killed McCorkendale, just shot him in the back, and he was dead before he hit the ground. It killed him instantly. Then checked him to see if he had any money on him, any valuables at all. Some money and Dwayne's keys were taken from the scene, and his fellow truckers did report a suspicious vehicle driving erratically near the area. But to this day, no one has been brought to justice. Hey man, what do you think you're doing? Trying to get somebody hurt out there? You don't know who you're messing with, good buddy. We'll drive anywhere we want. Number 9. Mother Mystery In the late 70s, a woman named Jane Snow had stopped briefly off Michigan's Interstate 75 while driving with her two children. The family split up to use the facilities, only Jane never returned. Her sons were tragically the ones to discover their mother in the ladies' room, the victim of a seemingly random and violent homicide. To compound things further, a hitchhiker with some very troubling circumstantial evidence was later hauled in by police. The hitcher named John Magali presented signs of a physical struggle, including scratches and bloodstains, and had an outstanding warrant to his name. <laughs> However, he could not be successfully linked to the case, and Snow's death remains unsolved. Number 8. Motorhome Nightmare there are few things more American than packing up a big RV or motorhome and driving cross-country to see the sights. It's an adventure many retirees chose to do during their golden years, enjoying some well-earned R&R. Unfortunately, parking those vehicles can be dangerous and unpredictable at night. And in 1979, Franklin Schumacher and Patricia Doyle were found unresponsive and piled on top of each other after it was reported that their motorhome hadn't been moved in days. To this day, the crime has not been solved. Although, hearsay from sources close to the couple claim that Shoemaker might have associated with illegal elements that may have contributed to the incident. Number 7. Shot in the Stall Our next entry is yet another tragic murder that occurred during an otherwise routine bathroom break while traversing down the highway. This time, the victim was Belgium native Xavier Baligan, who was traveling through France with his sons sleeping in the back seat. Baligan left the pair in the car while he quickly used the facilities, but never returned. A witness claims to have heard gunshots shortly after Baligan left the car, and the Belgian's body was found inside one of the stalls. A year later, a murder with the same MO occurred to another tourist in the French Alps, but to this day, there have been no arrests in either case. Number 6. A Strange Disappearance Family and friends of Lee Cutler became concerned on the afternoon of October 20, 2007, when the 18-year-old did not show up for work. Concern turned into despair when Lee's car was found at a rest stop in Baraboo, Wisconsin, nearly 200 miles away from Cutler's hometown of Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Although Lee was nowhere to be found, security cam footage was discovered at a nearby Walmart, where the teen was filmed purchasing cold and pain medication. These purchases, now empty, were found in Lee's car, along with his wet clothes, a note, and an indication that he took his own life. However, Lee Cutler's body has still never been found. Number 5. Where is David Lovely? Uprooting from one side of a country to another is never easy, but perhaps Jackie Abbott felt that the trip would be a lot more fun traveling together with her son David Lovely and daughter Allison. David took his motorcycle, following his family until his bike needed some repairs. They made plans to meet at a different rest stop after this was done, but David never arrived. 
a phone call placed to his aunt revealed that David had a breakdown and decided to try his chances with an offer of help from a man he met while he was waiting at a rest stop. His motorcycle was found relatively undamaged off a side road, but David's family would never see the young boy again. Number 4. Cold Case in Ontario Sometimes, cold cases remain that way despite the best efforts from police and the public at ending their search. Our next entry is unfortunately one of those cases, specifically when the remains of an unidentified woman were found at an Ontario rest stop in the summer of 2005. Thirteen years later, in 2018, police were still searching for who had committed the crime that had left the woman with such injuries. The death appears to be suspicious. Uh, OPP are trying to find out who this woman is. We're quite confident that somebody out there knows something. We're asking for the public's assistance and maybe bring some closure to a family that's grieving. Although leads were followed and some progress was made in the case, the woman remains unidentified and the case is still open as of 2021. Number three, the Blind River Killer. It was a nice, quiet river, ran along by this picnic area. We went out and we walked around and we thought, gee, we, it's, it's a nice, quiet little spot. We'll, we'll maybe spend the night here. Although there are some who believed convicted criminal Ronald Glenn West was responsible for our next entry, the actual identity of the Blind River Killer remains inconclusive. This is deeply troubling, especially given the brutal and seemingly random nature of what happened to Gord and Jackie McAllister on the night of June 28, 1991. Get your things, get them in the purse. Get your purse, you will, we'll give him the money. Please, please. <laughs> The McAllisters were accosted, robbed, and attacked by an overnight assailant while their motorhome was parked for the night. Jackie perished in the attack, but Gord managed to escape and hide, while another passerby, Brian Major, was shot by the attacker before the latter left the scene. As soon as he went by, I rolled back out and got up into our motorhome and drove out onto the highway. I knew I had to get out onto the highway to get some help. The case was even profiled on Unsolved Mysteries, but to this day, the true identity of the Blind River Killer is unclear. The murder of Jackie McAllister and Brian Major is believed to be approximately 30 years old, about 5 feet 10 inches tall with a slight build. He has long, stringy blonde hair and a receding hairline. Number 2. Death on the Road An emotional family reunion became even more tragic when recent widower Dexter Stefanik went missing after leaving his son's home in Oregon. He was anxious to get home. and he drove away. That's the last I saw him. Stefanik's abandoned car was found at a Montana rest stop after being intentionally set ablaze. Dexter's body was found shortly thereafter, dumped. Although a man was reportedly seen driving Dexter's car and leaving it holding two cans of gasoline, the culprits have never been apprehended. Yeah, he was around six feet tall, between 35 and 40 years old. He was real light complected and clean shaved. No sign of anything wrong with him. No, there was nothing unusual about him. He didn't seem to be excited or nothing. Oddly enough, money that was being held inside Stefanik's suitcase was still there, although his clothes seemed to have been intentionally tossed about after the fact, in an apparent attempt to throw off investigators. The things that we found that day were just not things that had been here before, and it really bothered me that the week before, Everything was normal, and seven days later, all of this stuff appeared. Number one, last rites. The act of giving last rites is the holy administration of sending off the terminally ill or dying with the traditions of their respective faiths. Our last entry presents the unthinkable, however, a priest being attacked after being called to perform these rites under false pretenses. The caller's grandfather was requesting last rites be administered as he was sick and dying. The body of Father Rinaldo Rivera was found near a New Mexico rest stop after earlier receiving a frantic call from a man reportedly needing last rites. The man said his name was Michael Carmelo and that he was telephoning from a rest stop near Waldo, New Mexico. Speculation on the case tenuously connects it to another priest, John Kerrigan, whose disappearance was said to be connected with accusations of abuse. The theory is that priests were being targeted by victims of said abuse, although to this day, no hard evidence has surfaced to support that claim or to solve Rivera's murder. We're not giving up on this case. 
there is still grieving in Santa Fe about his wonderful life and ministry and then his tragic murder. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.